Okay, so Todd, I know we've done a little bit of an overview of everything you got here, but we've got to start with some basics. Right. So what I was hoping would be okay is if we can come into this amazing server closet equipment rack, I guess it would be a main distribution frame if you were talking Network Plus. Yep. And can you just give us a quick rundown of your internet service providers and, and just the, the basics of how you get all this amazing stuff connected? Sure, let's go on in. <laughs> Okay, now folks, Todd's already given me a little bit of a rundown of everything, so uh, I, I did get to see this once before, but this is the first time we're really going to break it down. Now what we did do is we were able to actually scooch the rack over a little bit to make it easier to see, but basically, Todd, go ahead and take it away. Sure. First of all, who's your internet service provider? Well, I actually have three. <laughs> uh, because you know you never can have too much connectivity. Hey, I, no doubt there. So the first service I have is comes in from Comcast, and it comes in through this uh, this cable modem here. We also have phone service with this as well, and this is a 50 megabits down, 20 megabits up, and this goes into the router that we'll we'll look at in a second. Uh, the speed on this is generally pretty good. The challenge that I've had with the Comcast service is with the speed of their DNS servers. So I've used Google and OpenDNS to, to kind of open that up and get a little bit better speed. It seems that the streaming speed tends to be better sometimes than the browsing speed. So that's just a very interesting quirk, I think, with, the, with Comcast. You know, on the Network Plus, they ask one of the questions is, is, how can you definitively prove that you've got a problem with your DNS server? And one of the answers is, is you can get to a website by its uh, fully qualified domain. You cannot get to a web, web page by its FQDN or URL, whatever you want to call it, but you can get to it by its IP address. But right. the problem is, is how many IP addresses for websites do you have memorized? So one of the things I always teach when uh, I'm teaching Network Plus is always have one IP address for an alternative DNS server memorized. Yep. And that's why I love Google, because it's 8.8.8.8. And they have 8.8.4.4. .4. That's right, they sure do. Yeah, Sprint has some easy to remember ones to it. And I always remember a website, you know, CNN or Google just as well, because and Google has a new tool called NameBench that will do a complete DNS test on your service and will identify the best DNS servers in your region uh, to plug in. So I, I tried that the other day and was able to, um, to identify some better DNS servers for my area. You don't mind if I take notes while you're talking? No, please do. do. <laughs> okay. All right, so, so we've got the stamp, but this is just good old cable modem, right? It's just good old cable modem. It comes in, there's a, a coax run that comes in from the box outside. It comes into uh, this panel here. I don't have it amplified or anything and uh, it's split out because I do have it running to a couple of cable cards for TV service, but that doesn't degrade the, the internet at all. Now, do you have anything special on this service? Do you have like static IPs or? No, the, I have had static IPs in the past and with the Verizon Fios service, which is a, a fiber to the home and then uh, uh, ethernet run into the, to the router inside, I did have a static IP for that, but not for this. Okay. So you, but you got more than one connection right. here. So what else are we looking at? So the other service that I have here, and this is the first one that we got, and this is AT&T UVerse. And this is another of the fiber to the home services. And then there's an ethernet run from the box outside. And with this service, we have TV, internet, and phone. Uh, the same thing that we have with Comcast. Each of these costs about $200 a month for the, the full boat packages that we have. But as I said before, you can never have too much connectivity and you can never be too entertained. <laughs> uh, but uh, what we have here is my wife is, is very sensitive to the phone going out if I'm gone. So what we've done here is I have phone services on both of these. I have them coming into a switch box. So if the phone goes out on one, she can switch it over. Uh, the other broadband service that I have is uh, Clear's 4G wireless service. So I have a, a receptor antenna in the attic. It picks up the 4G signal and then it sends a line down here and I can plug that in as a failover device. And it's, it's a pretty good service. If you can, you, there's no contract, uh, you can pay a, a small amount a month and, and get a reasonable quality. So this Fios is, is 30 and 10, so 30 down, 10 up. The Comcast was 50, 20, and the, the clear service is eight down and two up. I, you know, you've probably got better connectivity than some small town points of presence that I'm aware of. Yeah, it's when you, when you go overseas and you tell people, you know, the U.S. broadband infrastructure gets a bad rap. We have better broadband connectivity in the U.S. than any other place in the world. I completely agree. The, the ability to, to get this low a cost broadband service to a small business in the U.S. where other people outside are paying a, $1,000 a month for a FRAC T1 that's not even anything like this Comcast. So we do have great broadband connectivity. Okay, so we've got, um, got AT&T UVerse. 
got good old Comcast, which I have too. Oh, by the way, are you on the? Are you using IPv6 at all yet? No, not on this yet. They haven't started handing out uh, any addresses yet for IPv6. I'm on the Comcast IPv6 transition team, so it's pretty cool stuff coming down the pike. It's been a long time coming. I know, I know. So we got one, two, three connections. Right. Todd, we got to take this to the next step. Can we go outside and see some of your interconnects? Sure. Fantastic.